Welcome to this first of three Level 2 Chemistry videos on equilibrium principles. Equilibrium can mean different things, and it is a term that is used in physics too. This seesaw is in a state of equilibrium, as it is completely balanced. These rocks too are also balanced. These are both examples of static equilibrium, one that is perfectly balanced and there is no change. This graphic shows a rock, here, ready to fall to a lower energy state in the bottom of this energy valley, even after it rolls up the other side a little bit. This is a good model for a chemical equilibrium, and links equilibrium to thermodynamics in a term called the Gibbs free energy. But that is for more advanced learning in later years. You may touch on this concept a little bit in year 13, but essentially we leave the universities to deal with the concepts of equilibrium related to energy. In this introductory video, I will cover these learning outcomes. I will describe reactions that go to completion and those which are reversible. I will describe the difference between an open and closed chemical system. I will describe what a steady state system is and finally I will define the concept of dynamic equilibrium as a type of chemical reaction and look at three scenarios of equilibrium reactions and their reaction rate curves. To begin, let's look at what happens when we combine reactants together. If we take magnesium with hydrochloric acid, it reacts fairly quickly forming hydrogen gas which bubbles off. Eventually the bubbles stop forming as one of the reactants run out and the reaction stops. This is called going to completion. Most reactions that we do in class are like this. Combustion, redox, neutralization, titrations. And the reaction rate curve showing the reactants and products will look a bit like this. Starting with 100% reactants, the concentration of these would slowly decrease in a typical reaction rate curve to zero. The concentration of the products starting at zero would slowly rise in a reverse reaction rate curve, reaching 100%. This reaction goes to completion. The next thing we will look at is the concept of reversible. Many reactions can be reversed, but some are harder to do because energy is needed. For example, hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water in your typical hydrogen balloon explosion, releasing a large amount of energy. This water can be turned back into hydrogen and oxygen through a process of electrolysis. This process requires an input of energy from the electricity supply, which in this case is a typical 9 volt battery. We can combine these two processes together using a reversible arrow like this. Here are some more examples. Blue litmus can be turned red, shown here, with the addition of some acid. And red litmus can be turned blue by the addition of an alkali. This is a reversible process between acid and base. Physical changes are all reversible processes, shown here by the reversible process of a liquid evaporating to a gas and then being reversed by condensing back into a liquid. Now let's look at some observable changes. When you watch clouds on a lovely summer's day, you'll observe that clouds both form by the condensation of water vapour forming droplets, and you'll see clouds disappear by the evaporation of water droplets back into the gas phase. This is a reversible process and can be shown by this combined equation. This is an example of a steady state. As the relative amounts of clouds you see stays the same, even though there is a continual evaporation and condensation processes going on. We often refer to the reaction shown here, being the change between liquid molecules and gas molecules, as the system. The word system is just another name for reactants and products. 
In this example, the system is open. That means the water molecules can leave by raining or enter by more evaporation from the ocean. And if one of these processes go faster than the other, eventually the clouds dry out or more clouds form and you get a cloudy day. Here is another example of a steady state. This is an open system as water is leaving through the input tap and exiting out the output tap. The level of water in the tank stays constant because the water input is equal to the water output. This is an example of a steady state. Turning off the input tap will increase the rate of the forward reaction, i.e. the water coming out, and move this reaction completely towards the products. In other words, you'll empty the tank. That means the reaction will go to completion. Next, we'll stop the water from entering or leaving. This is called making the system closed. This is easiest to show by using a beaker of boiling water with the lid on. Evaporation and condensation are still incurring inside the beaker, but because the system is closed, in other words, no reactants or products can leave or enter, these processes are now occurring at the same rate. This is not a steady state now, but an example of dynamic equilibrium. So we use an equilibrium arrow shown here like this. The rate of evaporation, which is the forward reaction, is equal to the rate of condensation, which is the back reaction. The forward reaction is always the one referred to reading from left to right. And the back or reverse reaction is always the one that is read from right to left. From the outside looking in, there appears to be no change in the amount of water inside the beaker even though both reactions are still occurring. This lack of observable change is the key to an equilibrium system. In the first slide, we looked at a reaction rate curve for a reaction which goes to completion. But in an equilibrium reaction, as the products form, the back reaction, shown here in red, starts to speed up and the reactants start to reform this competition process starts to take over. Eventually, the forward and back reactions will reach a stable position at this point here. And the relative amounts of reactants and products now remains constant. This is when equilibrium is reached. In this first example, the relative amount of reactants fall to 50%, and the relative amount of products, shown in red, rises to 50%. When the equilibrium point is reached after a period of time, the concentration stabilise and no longer change. At this point, the ratio of products to reactants will be 50-50 or 1 to 1. The equilibrium between hydrogen iodide, hydrogen and iodine gases behaves like this. In our second example, the relative amount of reactants only falls to about 60% and the relative amount of products rises to only about 40% when equilibrium is reached. So this reaction has not progressed very far at all before the relative amount of reactants and products stabilizes at equilibrium. The reactants fall and the products rise and then stabilize at concentrations which are not equal. In this reaction, the ratio of products to reactants will be 40 to 60. In other words, 2 to 3. Ethanoic acid molecules dissolved in water is an example of a reaction that behaves in equilibrium like this. Our third and final example. The relative amount of reactants, shown here in blue, falls lower than the relative amount of products when equilibrium is reached. This reaction has progressed far to completion, but not quite. 
and this reaction, the ratio of product to reactants, would be 60 to 40, or 6 to 4. In other words, 3 to 2. The combustion of sulphur dioxide with oxygen gas is an equilibrium system that behaves like this. And there we go. So, in conclusion, what have we learnt? We have learnt that completion is a process where there is 100% conversion of reactants to products. We have learnt that many reactions are reversible or can be reversed if conditions are right. We have learnt that open systems occur when reactants or products can leave or enter and a closed system cannot. We have learnt a dynamic equilibrium is a reversible reaction which has both the forward and back reactions occurring at the same rate. And finally, in an equilibrium system there can be different amounts of products and reactants, not often equal. You should now pause this video and write out these five outcomes onto your WISC sheet. Write a summary about what dynamic equilibrium reaction is and how it differs from steady state. Also make comments about the relative amount of reactants and products in the equilibrium mixture. We will try to explore this principle further in class with other models, demonstrations or videos that may help you understand it further. Make sure you record any questions on the WISC sheet about this video that we can explore these further in class.